guys, it's TechRan here, and today we're doing a thousand dollar PC build on a budget. That is right. Let's go over the spec and the prices. First of all, we got our CPU, the i5 1200F. That is right. This is a six core, 12 thread processor, which only costs a total 150 on Amazon, and it's honestly really insane with the GPU we're going to use. Now for the GPU, we're using the ASUS 3060 White. This is supposed to be a white theme build, however, we didn't get all the parts in time for my boy over here who's trying to build a Skytrack sim, but he needs a good PC for it, and this will be completely overkill, and we got it for a really good price, only at $280. Now for our motherboard, we got the MSI Mad B660. That is right. This is going to go perfectly with our CPU, and honestly, just a high-quality motherboard that, honestly, I'm looking forward to working with. For our RAM, we're going with Corsair Vengeance White Theme. This is only 32 megahertz, but it'll be perfectly good since Intel CPUs don't utilize some RAM frequency compared to Ryzen, and this only costs us a total of $48. For our boot drive, we're going to the Samsung 870 Evo SSD. This actually is a one terabyte version, which only costs us $50, and honestly, it's gonna be very good for our boot drive. I will, of course, have a hard drive link down below because this is only a one terabyte build PC, but you can get a Seagate Barracuda hard drive that can have up to four terabytes, only $64. So honestly, grab that if you do want to upgrade down the line here. For a cooler, we're going the Deep Cool Cooler. This is not the white theme one. We were gonna to try to get that originally. However, it was not gonna get here on time as we wanted. We want it sooner or later, which only cost us $35, which would be overkill for our CPU, but it's gonna do a really good job. For the power supply, we're going with EVGA 500 watt bronze power supply. The price of this is currently $60, however, this might change depending on the situation because we got this from a third hand market, but it's new, so that's all that matters. For the case, we're going with the Corsair D4000 Airfoil. This actually costs us $95, but this is not the white version, so it might be cheaper than that than that what I listed with you guys here, but I'll fix the price right here and post if uh, I'm wrong. Now, that is the price for overall the build, honestly. Not thousand dollars, which we love to see. So what we're gonna do next is get building into this. So the first thing we're gonna do is build into our motherboard. So we're just gonna open this up like so, grab the motherboard on out. What we're just gonna do now is close this box and we're gonna build on top of this box right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is open the little latch on our motherboard. Ooh, that went flying. And then I'm gonna pull this back. We're gonna find the golden triangle on our CPU. So the golden triangle is right there. Places on in just lightly like so. We'll line up the other one. Should actually say on the top of this thing here. Yeah, triangles right there. So what we're gonna do now. Just place in our GPU, my CPU as lightly as so. With that, we're good. Now what we're gonna do is close it down. Get our bracket. So what we're gonna do now is just apply pressure like so, and now with that, the cake pot will come off. Now we're just gonna lock that in place. So with that our CPU is installed. Next, we're gonna install RAM. We're gonna take the first two slots we see here and just pop those on open. And then we're just gonna find the two for the RAM right here. And we're just gonna pop that on into our motherboard. So I just wanna point this to us. There we go, yeah, see, there it is. And we're just gonna pop this on in to our motherboard. And then we're just gonna do the same thing again with the other one. Just pop the other one in on both sides. And now our RAM's installed. Now that our CPU and RAM is installed, next thing we gotta do is install our storage, which is gonna be next step because we don't have any M.2s. We can just go on to installing this into our case. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the motherboard. So what we're gonna do is like pop it on into the back here. This fan header is like stuck in the way. What we're gonna try to do is plop this in here. So for this motherboard, it just plops in. Once you just line up, you just mount it on in with your screws. This one's noticeable. Some motherboards, you might have to like push it inward and for it to click. So uh, now you know. So we're gonna do now sticker Phillips, push our mounting screws that came with it. We're just gonna line them on up. Our motherboard is installed now. So what we're gonna do next is uh, get our rest of our things in there, such as our power supply. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our power supply and we're just gonna figure out which way is the fan because we want the fan on the power supply pointing down because then the airflow for it will be better. So we now know that. We're just gonna slip this on in. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take our screws that we have and we're just gonna screw in our power supply. And make sure there's all four screws in for this one. Good to go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this back plate open. Then we're gonna take actually two of the top mounts off because we need to install our GPU. And I will quickly say, she is a beaut. Dual mount GPU, so we shouldn't have to use any more than two. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our GPU, so we're gonna slip it the back in, like so. 
line it up with the mount on the top here, which is kind of hard to see. So we're gonna clean it, we're gonna clear this, make sure to push it in, and what happens is it's gonna push down. So we're gonna just like apply a little pressure, and there we go, our GP is installed. Now what we're gonna do is just take our screws from earlier, and we're gonna just re-put them back in. Now we're gonna install our SSD, so we're gonna just take these off and out. And then we're gonna pull that off. And we're gonna take our SSD like so. And we're just gonna take it, line it up with the screw holes in the back here. Then grab our screwdriver and then set this down and just start installing it. I'm not gonna lie, for this one, they use the really tiny screws from the bag, which are like microscopic. So, like, here, just give you guys a quick example. Here's this one, like, pretty small itself, but this is the SSD screws they're using. Like, sheesh, that's such a big difference. Um, but yeah, I just want to kind of glance over that because I know like somebody's gonna like, oh, you can show me how to install my SSD and me be like, yeah, uh, I, I need to make sure to cover that. <laughs> so just kind of talk over that much. I can just like kind of just pop this on in. With that, our C uh, not CPU, SSD is installed. For the cooler, I'm not gonna show the whole process on how to install it, but I will have a video linked down below on how to install it for yourself because that's the video I use as a reference material. So uh, yeah. Yo, future dreamer in here, uh, messed up something. So you can see the two slots, dim slots of RAM are installed, not correct. So what they're supposed to be is the one where it's empty here and the empty on the opposite side. That's where you're supposed to install the RAM. Uh, I'm somehow messed that up and uh, didn't show that I fixed it in post. Uh, so what you need to do is just install, instead of on that slot, you need to install one on the right side, far side, and then one in the middle slot right here, like you see on my PC over there. Uh, yeah, that's just a silly error on my part. Okay, PC's built. We didn't go over everything, plug everything in, because, like, that's really straightforward. So we're going to turn this on now. Everything works. We should see a boot and go into post. Uh, so let's uh, see if we get our PC working. Mm -hmm. That's a good sign. Okay, we're all set to go. PC's built. Okay, next we're gonna install Windows 10. So what we're gonna do is take our Windows 10 flash drive that we have, plug that on in, turn on our PC, and what should happen here is that we should get an indicator that it's gonna install Windows. Okay, we're good, we're gonna install Windows now. Let's go. So the PC's now done. We're gonna do a quick stress test and run some games out and see what the performance looks like with the 3060 plus the i5. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Before we get into benchmarking, I want you guys to know there's a problem with this motherboard that even though it says it's a Wi-Fi motherboard supported, it doesn't actually have the drivers automatically installed, but yours might depending on the situation. If you don't like we had the problem here, what you want to do is go to this website, which I linked down below and select whatever Windows version you have. So we're using Windows 10, but if you need Windows 11, you select that. So then what you want to do is go to LAN drivers, go to the Wi-Fi driver, download this. Then we just find this in your folder. And all you have to do is extract the file. Then once you extract the file, what you want to do is just open this file and up, go to UWD, then click on Windows 64, installer, and then you want to just click the installation for wireless setup. And once this is installed, then you'll have access to using Wi-Fi. I don't know why it doesn't automatically have Wi-Fi manually installed on the motherboard already. If you did find this helpful though, make sure to drop me a like, always appreciated. So with the max settings we're running for the 3060 and also the i5, we're actually getting rough around above 150 to minimum like near 170 but then we're also hitting like 200 indoors and outdoors to be like pretty good so like the settings for this gpu is like pretty much cranked up i could go higher and if i were to lower it i could probably get 250 off this and i'm just getting chased by this guy i'd like hear him right behind me maybe not so if we speak of the devil kind of moment if we were to literally just change the settings on this for this game like this if you want optimal settings for apex you want to just do this you want to disable all this jazz and just put everything on low and turn off that and keep pencil and all that jazz and now if we were to apply this you can see now with all the settings on low being the best settings possible for apex you're gonna get over 200 frames on minimum but if you were to crank it up to the absolute max you probably only get like 170 on average to something lower so like this looks very good what would you have to say about this man it looks great looks amazing and then when you get indoors like you can just skyrocket to like 270 and stuff like that like Surprisingly, like he's actually bouncing out really high in this game. Oh, can I kill this guy? Let me just run away. Oh, shoot. Quick still. 
Next up, we're testing Rainbow Six Siege. I've already maxed out the settings. This is automatically like what it came with too. And I'm not gonna lie, we still have two gigs of VRAM and we're already hitting over 200 plus FPS. Now, if we were to lower the settings to the minimal, best settings for this game, like optimization wise, just to play competitively, you would easily be able to hit over, what is it, 300 FPS most likely? Like, yo, this is actually kind of insane. What would you say about this, man? It looks real fantastic. It does, it does. Okay, so that's all the testing of this. We were gonna test more games, but we wanna go test this now on his golfing sim. So, uh, yeah. Well, the PC turned out really good. He's using it for his golf thing. Seemed like he's still there where, you know, he's just hitting balls and just chilling. That PC is going to be able to do anything else that he wants to do, though, down the line. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with the results. No problems occurred with it. We got everything set up, all good to go. And honestly, outperforms my main gaming PC. I will say, the 30 series GPUs are actually kind of insane. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I won't be able to get myself a 3080 or 4080 because of the fact the market's pretty bad. We can all see that, of course. But uh, yeah, if you did enjoy this video here today, Today, make sure to smash the like button, get subscribed so you don't miss some future tech content, and until then, I'll see you guys in our video, okay? Cool. Tech Grant out.